Hello and welcome to today's episode of Piano TV. So today we are going to take a look at the famous prayer, essentially Ave Maria, which has been recreated into multiple compositions throughout history. Probably the most famous version of the Ave Maria that you're probably familiar with is by Schubert, although his original version didn't actually use the Latin prayer text, which is kind of like the updated um, edited version of Schubert's works that use that prayer. But we're going to look at uh, the Ave Maria from other composers' point of view too, so we're going to look at it from Gounod's perspective, from Liszt's perspective, and others. First of all though, we are going to take a look at where the Ave Maria prayer originated, and we're even going to listen to a Gregorian chant version of it. So let's get started. Ave Maria is Latin for Hail Mary, and this is a prayer that's been around since about 1050. It's evolved over the course of hundreds of years, and it mainly originated in Roman Catholicism, though Eastern Orthodox traditions also have a version of it as well. Up on the screen here is the Latin and English version of the Ave Maria. Um, those of you who were raised in a Christian tradition or Eastern Orthodox might have uh, some running knowledge of this. Since this is an extremely common prayer in Western Christian traditions, um, that's a big part of why it's been set to music hundreds of times over the last thousand years. One use of the Hail Mary is by saying it 150 times as per the rosary. There are 150 beads and thus 150 repetitions of the prayer. The idea of this is to basically get a person into a deep, meditative state, kind of like chanting. And just for the sake of comparison, the Eastern Orthodox and Eastern Catholic version looks like this. Um, and the music that we're going to be listening to today, it's going to be based on the Western version of the prayer. Though other composers have, of course, used the Eastern version. We're just not going to be focusing on that one for today's video. Let's take a listen to the Gregorian chant version of Ave Maria. And just a quick primer on Gregorian chants. They are a middle-aged style of music that is sung a cappella, which means with no accompaniment, so it's vocals only. Back in the day, musical rules as we know them didn't really exist. There weren't formal ways of writing sheet music, there wasn't really a formal rhythm system, so stuff like that didn't really exist, and most music was written in what we now know as modes. And that's part of the reason why middle-aged music sounds so bizarre to our modern ears. Let's start with Franz Schubert's Ave Maria, by far the most famous version. This work is actually from a larger collection of seven pieces, his Opus 25, and they're based on the epic poem called The Lady of the Lake. So in this setting, the song is called Ellen's third song, and it's the sixth of the sets, composed in 1825. The one thing about Schubert's Ave Maria is that it opens with the words Ave Maria, but otherwise bears no resemblance to the original Latin prayer text. But what a lot of composers throughout the years have done is they've taken Schubert's Schubert's composition and they've inserted the Latin text into it and we're going to take a look at that. Other composers who have manipulated Schubert's Ave Maria include Liszt who did piano transcriptions for it. In the context of The Lady of the Lake, the character Ellen is hanging out in a goblin's cave with her exiled father. Meanwhile, there's a battle going on and there's another character named Roderick Dew who hears Ellen singing a prayer to the Virgin Mary, Ave Maria. So the song itself does relate to the original Latin prayer, but the context for it, as you can see, is very different. People often think that Schubert did write the tune to correspond fully with the original prayer text, but those are different versions. They weren't written by him. Other people took his tune and made it fit the traditional prayer words. Here are the lyrics used in Schubert's original version. So the version that he actually wrote that other people didn't adapt. So we're going to take a quick listen to this and we're going to actually listen to it two ways. So this first way, we're going to hear it with Schubert's original German lyrics. And then in the next uh, listen through, we're going to listen to with like the altered tune to the Latin text. Now 
Now, if we take a quick listen to the altered version, you'll notice it's pretty much virtually identical, but the text has been changed to the original Latin prayer of Ave Maria. Again, Schubert didn't write this version, but this version is extremely common, so much so that people think that Schubert actually intended it this way. Let's take a listen. Schubert's Ave Maria has been used many times in the media and pop culture, most notably in the movie from 1940 Fantasia, which has a lot of great classical music in it. It was also performed at John F. Kennedy's funeral, and it's been featured in TV shows all the way from Community to Bob's Burgers to Supernatural. The piano composer Franz Liszt was a deeply religious man throughout his life, and he was so religious that he even almost became a priest, like he took the orders but never finished. And this prompted him to write a lot of spiritually inspired music, including his own two versions of the Ave Maria. His first version was written in 1846, when he was at the height of his fame, he was at the peak of his rock stardom in Europe, and he was touring a bunch, and he was really famous. It was written for six part mixed chorus, so there was uh, two sopranos, an alto, two tenors, and a bass. Usually when we talk about Liszt, it's in the context of his piano work, so it's really fun to talk about him and his choral works, which we don't usually talk about too, too much. You'll notice that his version features a repeating of the text, so the singers will sing Ave Maria a whole bunch of times before moving on to the next phrase of the text and so on. You'll also notice that there's really interesting harmonies and textures used here. quick listen to his second choral version which was written for four voices this time and it was written half a step lower so it's it's similar in a lot of ways I feel like it's a little bit more mature than his work from six years earlier but it's still fairly conventional in its style Liszt also had a penchant for transcribing other composers' works onto the piano. And this is something that he did with Schubert's version of Ave Maria. And there's a really great video of Valentina Lisitsa performing it on YouTube, which I highly recommend you check out. Though Liszt's version of the Ave Maria, he has a couple versions, are lesser known, Charles Gounod also wrote a version that is quite well known. Not necessarily because he himself is a well-known composer, I didn't even know his name before doing this video. The reason it's so popular is because he superimposed the words of Ave Maria on top of Bach's very famous first prelude in C major. Gunod's version was originally published in 1853 and was titled uh, Meditation on the First Prelude on Piano by Bach. That's just my rough English translation there. Bach's original prelude was written in the Baroque period about 150 years before Gunod adapted it. And people were probably familiar with the tune at the time since Baroque music was making a comeback. This melody was conceived originally as 
as an improvisation, which means that Gunad basically just made up the tune on the spot. But it was later transcribed for a string instrument like the violin or cello to be played along with piano accompaniment. Just like Schubert's Ave Maria, you're probably familiar with this version just because of pop culture and weddings and funerals where it's frequently featured. It's been arranged and rearranged and performed and edited many, many times since it was originally created. So let's take a listen. The final composer we'll look at today is Anton Bruckner, who wrote three different settings to the Ave Maria. We'll be looking at the second setting today, WAB 6, which was composed in 1861 for seven unaccompanied voices. So usually a choir will be soprano, alto, tenor, bass. So this was that with all of the four voices doubled except for the soprano. This was originally performed at the old cathedral in Linz, where Bruckner was the organist. This motet is a callback to Gregorian chants because of the use of modal chords and really long phrases, but it also has some romantic qualities embedded in it as well, such as like dramatic contrasts and more interesting harmonies. This video is just scratching the surface of composers who have made their own versions of Ave Maria over the years. Some composers who whose versions might be a little bit lesser known include um, Dvorak, Verdi, and Brahms, mainly from the Romantic era. But you also have Eastern European composers such as Rachmaninoff and Stravinsky and Vavilov who made their own versions as well. In even earlier musical times in the Renaissance era, you had composers like Josco and Desprez and Palestrina who did their own versions additionally. And that is all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed learning about the Ave Maria and maybe you learned something new from this. I know I did and that's part of the reason I always love making videos like this because I get to go into research mode and listen to music that I might not have otherwise have been listening to. So it's a lot of fun for me as well. If you like this video, please give it, a, give it a thumbs up and you can visit me on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, the usual. I'm not usually super active on them, but like every now and then I have a mood, so you never know. Catch you in the next video. In the context of the Lady of the Lake, the character Ellen is hanging out in a goblin's cave with her exiled father. Meanwhile, there's a battle going on and another character... Oh, that didn't work very well.